Okay, hi everybody, this is Mr. Manning, and this video is going to be about how to record transactions into a cash receipts journal. So, quick reminder on cash receipts. This is any time that the corporation receives cash uh, for some sort of sale, usually. Okay, so um, if you make a sale on account, it does not go in this journal. And if you pay cash, it does not go in this journal. And if you purchase something on account, it does not go in this journal. Uh, but whenever you receive cash, it goes in this journal. All right, so a couple things that you're probably gonna want to be able to follow along with this video. First one is you're gonna want to have a blank cash receipts journal. And then you're also gonna probably want to have a copy of the transactions. So we are doing work together 10-2 and there is a on your own 10 2 that you can try after this video is over. All right, so let's go to the journal and talk about this first. Um, a lot of this journal looks familiar. You have a place for the date, place for the account, and a place for your document number. So those seem pretty familiar. But there is a lot of columns in this journal. We've got general debit, general credit, accounts receivable credit, sales credit, sales tax payable credit, Sales discount debit, cash debit. This feels kind of overwhelming. Um, so I'm going to add, I'm going to tell you to do something that I think will help you with this particular uh, journal. In this particular class, we are never going to use the general debit or the general credit columns for the cash receipts journal. So something that you might want to do now and in uh, future times when you use the cash receipts journal is actually black out these two columns. So I'm going to do that now. And when I say black out, I mean just kind of make them, fill them with black. That way you won't be tempted to put anything in those two spaces because nothing is supposed to go there. All right. Now this feels a little bit more reasonable. We still have three credit sections and we have two debit sections but hopefully it will not be quite as intimidating as it was before. All right, so let's start with the very first transaction. There's gonna mainly be two types of transactions that you will put into this journal. You will put whenever you receive cash on account, and what that means is that a company owed you money, they had purchased something from you previously on account, and now they are paying their bill. And you will also put transactions called cash and credit card sales. This is usually information that you get from the cash register that's in the store. So at the end of the day or end of the week, however this particular company does it, they add up all of the sales that they received from that cash register and they record it in this journal. So let's start with October 4th. Received cash on account from Oakley Company. $371 covering S96 R144. All right, so Oakley Company had, had been to our corporation previously. They had purchased something that cost $371 and they purchased it on account. They promised to pay us back later. And they are fulfilling that promise now. They have sent us $371 worth of cash. It probably was a check, but we call it cash in the accounting world. We now need to record that transaction. So over here on the right, there's a couple of things. S96 and R144. It says covering S96. The sales slip for this transaction was S96. So this would allow you to go back and look to see what Oakley Company originally purchased. But the thing that's important for us in the cash receipts journal is the R144. This is, stands for Receipt 144. So this is the receipt that we are issuing to Oakley Company to prove that they paid their bill. All right, so let's begin. October 4th, Oakley Company, because they are the ones that are paying us. The document number is R144. It is important to put the R there. There's gonna be two different doc types of documents that we're gonna use in this journal. And we wanna make sure that you distinguish that this one was a receipt. Now let's get over here to the credits and the debit section. <clears throat> Anytime somebody pays us back for money that they had borrowed from us previously, it's gonna be accounts receivable. 
So Oakley Company is doing that in this particular case. So their accounts receivable is going to be $371. And then we are receiving cash. We did not offer any kind of discount to Oakley Company. So this part stays uh, blank. And in the cash section, we are going to put the amount that they paid us, 371 As always, debits and credits have to equal. We have a transaction of 371 cash debit, transaction of 371 accounts receivable credit, they equal. So we are done with that transaction. Let's move on to the next one. October 13th, recorded cash and credit card sales, $8,361.60 plus a sales tax of $501.70 for a grand total of $8,863.30, TS-43. Um, TS can stand for Terminal Summary, and Terminal Summary uh, would be kind of like the terminal, would be like the cash register, and this is the summary of all the transactions that went uh, through that terminal. It could have been cash transactions, could have been credit card sales. doesn't matter, we add them all together. All right, so we are going to record this transaction. It's the 13th. Because this is a terminal sale or a um, cash and credit card sale, we actually don't have a specific account to put this in. So we're going to leave this blank. And our document number is the TS-43. So we're going to put TS-43. OK. This is not anybody paying us back from previous transaction, so we're going to leave accounts receivable blank. Sales credits is how much we actually sold. Sales tax is how much tax we collected. So we sold $8,361.60, and we collected $501.70 in sales tax. So I am on the sales credit going to put $8,361.60. And on sales tax payable, 501.70. One thing I'd like to point out real quick is about this sales tax payable. This is a payable account. And what that means is that we have to pay this to somebody else later. That's why we cannot consider it as part of our sales. We owe the government this money. We are temporarily collecting it for them, and then we're going to pay it to them. Now, we have two credits. We collected cash, so the total of these two together is going to be our cash debit. You could write a quick equation and add these two together if you wanted, but our transaction has already added them together and has told us the number here. So I'm just going to simply record that number, $8,863.30. Once again, there was no discount involved, so we're going to leave that part blank. All right, very last transaction, October 30th. <clears throat> Received cash on account from Sierra Supply, covering S97, $5,989, less 2% discount, R145. Okay, so this transaction is very similar to the transaction that took place on October 4th. We are receiving money from a company that had previously borrowed it from us. It is covering a sale that happened. This one's covering S97. However, for some reason, we offered Sierra Supply a 2% discount. This happens for a lot of reasons. One of the most common ones is companies will offer a discount if you pay early or pay on time. It's just kind of an incentive so that the company that owes money will actually pay their bill quickly. So we offered them a 2% discount. It sounds like that they are receiving that discount and that we are going to issue receipt 145 to Sierra Company or Sierra Supply, excuse me. So let's record this one. It happened on the 30th. It was Sierra Supply that is paying us back. We are issuing receipt 145 to prove that this transaction took place. <clears throat> Over here in the accounts receivable, this is the total amount that Sierra Supply owed us. They owed us $5,989. $5,989. However, we are not receiving that amount from Sierra Supply. We gave them a discount of 2%. 
So we need to find out how much their discount is going to be for. Uh, you could either bring up a calculator or we're using Google Sheets. So let's just write a simple equation. So equals the amount that they did owe multiplied by 2%. Hit enter. And it looks like we are giving them a discount of $119.78. That's a pretty good discount. Of course, it was also a pretty good sale, almost $6,000. Now we need to figure out how much they actually are paying us. They owed us this amount, $5,989. We are discounting $119.78. So we are just going to simply subtract these two numbers to figure out how much they actually owe us. So I'm going to write a quick equation again. Accounts receivable minus sales discount. We are going to actually receive $5,869.22 from Sierra Supply. All right, guys, uh, go ahead and try to do the on your own now.